bathed in sunlight, 4,585 pounds, one owner, and not a whole lot of use. 26 foot no slide bunkhouse Gray Wolf coming back in on trade to us here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We originally sold it uh, not too awful long ago. Folks took it out, had a good time, decided they like camping, decided they want to do more of it, swapped up to something with a slide out. So there you have it. And overall, I think you're going to see that it is in pretty darn good shape. This is a, uh, it's kind of like the RV equivalent of a car that with like 5,000 miles. It's just, it's just a heck of a deal. And I really feel like you can get a good beat on people based on the condition of a used RV when they trade it in. And everything that I'm seeing here, it, these were good folks. They took care of their stuff. Nothing was neglected. Nothing was abused. Nothing was left to chance. It's clean. It smells clean in here. They took care of it. Now, they did use it, but they didn't just let it fall apart. Starting up top here, you see how they extend that cabinet all the way back. You've got some good overhead cabinet space. And then down below, you see that big skirted apron style double stainless sink. Well, like stainless farm sink, actually. And a pair of big drawers plus space for wastebasket down below. Those are all really handy features. And those are all very often things a little camper doesn't have. And then when you put the sink cover back in place and the stovetop folded down, you see what I'm seeing here. And you actually have some decent prep space for a small camper. Now, a lot of the features I'm going to point out on this trailer, inside and outside, they're, they don't sound like amazing features. The difference is you don't usually get them in this size, class, or price point, such as centralized air conditioning. That is something that is still optional today in a lot of smaller basic trailers. And I truly feel, I, I don't like it. I think it's because there's a lot of first-time RV owners that don't understand the difference from centralized versus non-centralized. So they're going to buy something as cheaply as possible. And central air is one of those things that I don't think you want to skimp on. It's nice to get wherever you can get it. This can fold down into a sleeper. There's storage below. Same can be said for the sofa. Huge door side viewing window over here. And whether it's that dining table or the kitchen countertop, or even when we get into the bathroom, all of the counters in this are a sealed edge press membrane. Now the previous owners look like they had installed a, uh, a TV against the wall here, which is where it should be installed. You see where the hookups are located nearby, which is a great spot for it because this puts it straight across from the sofa. Um, the uh, Obviously there's you know the six holes there from where they did it. Now they did it nicely. They didn't tear anything up. They knew what they were doing when they did it. But it also tells you where you could install a TV or just hang a picture or a poster over it. Notice too the double curtains here. That's so that the top and the bottom bunks can have their own separate individual privacy so that you know the kiddos don't have to kind of fight one another. Now there's the BHSE and the DJSE bunkhouses. We're in the DJSE. Uh, the DJ actually stands for uh, the, the initials of somebody who kind of came up with the model number. Cherokee's really cool that way. Like the 17JG is the same way. I call this one, though, that does Josh sound excited or Don Johnson silly eggs. Whichever name makes more sense to you. Anyway, this one has the sink in the bathroom. The BHSE has the sink outside of the bathroom, but still has a separate bathroom sink. There's benefits to it both ways. There's not necessarily one that's better than the other. They build it both ways because some people won't buy the camper one way and will buy the camper the other way. So, you know, they let you pick your poison. And that big vent fan and a skylight and shower surround paneling and what I'm going to call the Shub, the Cherokee shower tub. It's kind of an in-betweener right there. These are all really cool things. You don't normally get shower surround paneling and a skylight and the big vent fan. Again, at a more basic price point class like this, but kind of like the central air and some things we're going to talk about outside. That's just Grey Wolf doing Grey Wolf things at the Cherokee Group. Now we saw the uh, TV hookups on that uh, almost bunk wall right there. The end of that upper cabinet on the top right of the screen right now, that's where you have your thermostat and your AM, FM, uh, Bluetooth stereo. It also has some HDMI plugs. So if you do want to expand your entertainment, this is a basic camper. I call it smarter class. Uh, it has the ability to be expanded to really kind of fit your needs, wants, and desires. But out of the gate, if you're somebody like me who just camps very, very casually, mostly not because I don't love it, but because I got to be at work. That's the catch-22 of working in the RV industry. You rarely get to enjoy the RV industry because you're working in the RV industry. I I've had some people ask me, hey, Josh, you know, you've been doing this a long time. What would you tell a new person? I tell them, I hope you love camping. And I hope you don't mind not doing any of it. <laughs>
Now we had already kind of peeked in that storage compartment, but you see the little simple side mount solar prep plug right there. Another thing that's kind of nice is they have a gas grill quick connect right up near the front of this thing, but it's not covered directly by the awning. The cool thing is that it's a free floating grill hookup. Like it doesn't, you're not forced to use it right there. If you have like a six foot, uh, you know, gas hose, you could cook under the awning on a rainy day. You could not cook under the awning on a sunny day. You can do whatever you want with it, which is pretty nice. Powered tongue jack on the front, doing the heavy lifting for us. Nice, uh, you know, hard shell cover for the propane tanks. And I'm pointing stuff like that out because this is uh, what I tend to call a smarter class camper. Simple, basic, super, super effective. Not usually over the top, but things like a power jack, propane tank covers, a black tank flush, an outside utility shower, all of which this RV has, most of which you don't usually find at this class, size, and budget. And something which has really become just a signature feature of the Cherokee RV group almost as a whole is that 200 pound rated cargo rack on the back here. And it's so, so handy. Uh, you know, whether it's coolers that you're moving, bicycles, a small generator, there's just, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Now between the overhead clearance lamps, you also see uh, it is backup camera ready, which once again is something you don't often find in this class. Now the spare tire would have been an optional piece of equipment that we applied to this when it was brand new, as amazingly, as are the four corner stabilizer jacks. It uh, mind bogglingly is possible to find a no slide gray wolf out there with no corner jacks. I, I don't understand it, I never have. You will never see us carry one here at Halid RV. Uh, all of ours, we always put the jacks on, but there's some basic features like that that we make sure we include on these that are actually not standard features, which is now you're getting them even better at a use price tag. Drunken Uncle Leash Latch here. I don't know why they put the picture of the dog and the cat on And I'm sorry, I know that not everybody who pet camps camps with a dog, but does, is it me? It looks so unnatural when I see a cat on a leash. It's just, Nothing about that looks right to me. And I understand this sounds like a very arbitrary double standard, but is it just me? Does this look normal and this look weird? Or, I don't know, maybe that's one of those like, we gotta have a big talk about societal norms and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I don't know, I just know that that one really seems odd to me. <laughs> Way off topic, good Lord. Back to the camper, mega storage below the bunks. And as we step back a little bit past that baggage door, you see that huge campsite window from the dining area we already looked at. Dual outside speakers, plenty of outside outlets. You see that extra large entry handle, as well as the more ride stable steps. But what's nice is this also has the Miss Piggy anti-slam entry door. And you're saying the, the Miss Piggy what now? Because Miss Piggy can walk, walk up and go, hey, look at this, Kermit. Hey. Fun fact, guys. One time I was sitting there and I went, dude, is it just me? Or does Miss Piggy sound a lot like Yoda from Star Wars? Like a lot like it. Like I could sit there and I could imagine myself going, mm, use the force, Luke. Hoo! And like, I realized, I actually looked into it. They're voiced by the same person. Miss Piggy is Yoda, guys. Look it up, it's true. So imagine Yoda going, mm, mm green you are Kirby hmm like it's the same dude Wow um, it appears I've gotten way off topic once again so with that in mind before my train derails off the tracks once more I'm going to thank you folks for tuning in today I'll be signing apologies after the video so take care <laughs> stay safe have fun happy camping everyone <laughs>